Uh, good morning, everyone, once again. Uh, my Hindu is, uh, I mean, my name is Mahindo Bar, and uh, I'm a software developer. Today, I'm going to demonstrate to you the SQL injection, and we're going to discuss together as uh, we share the knowledge. So, I'm a collector with uh, Dr. Drake that is already on call. So, in this lecture, we'll not only look at uh, theory, we'll also look at what? That practical of how we can make use of the knowledge that we're going to look at today. So, I'll call upon everyone to be very attentive. As I've said, it's not going to be a non stop lecture, it's going to be a two session lecture. We'll have our first. 60 minutes and then we get a break then after a break we come back for the last session so everyone should be attentive knowing that uh, you will have to rest at the point and make sure that uh, you understand these things not only for classes or for exams passing but also for implementing when uh, you do your real world uh, things so this word as i've heard from you and the experience that you uh, yeah that you have I, I i can see that this word may not be really very very new to you but uh, i can still believe that uh, it may be new to some and uh, we, in the thing that we're going to cover we're going to learn at least at least one thing that you didn't know before so with that much said let's go straight to the business and uh, as I told you, the class will be interactive sometime. Dr. Drake will jump in, or even I'll have to ask uh, some of you to do what? To, to say something in the lecture. So let's begin. So we'll begin uh, by looking at our topic that we're going to look at software security. That's the theme. And uh, the topic is SQL injection. And uh, the lecturer is uh, Dr. Drake. And presented by Mohindo Mubarak. So let's see what what is prepared for you. Okay, so this is what we're going to cover today. We'll look at uh, what's meant by SQL injection. We'll look at uh, what is real SQL injection, and I mean we'll first look at what is meant by SQL before we go to SQL injection. We we'll mean by we'll first look at what is discussed. What is really SQL? Then we go to what is SQL injection because without understanding what's meant by SQL, we cannot understand what's meant by SQL injection. Then uh, we'll look at uh, programming languages that are vulnerable to what SQL injection. And then we'll look at uh, different examples of SQL injection with practices as well. And then we'll look at how we can reduce the risk of uh, SQL injection, and then we'll look at the summary or the conclusion of the entire lecture then we'll also hear from you which you can add to this comment or anything so that's how our today's program is going to go and uh, we'll have two sessions so in case my internet shakes don't uh, hesitate to tell me and i will improve it so let us begin <laughs> let us begin okay so what's meant by sql um uh these will be like the one that you'll be seeing on your screen they'll be like a standard definition but what i'll be saying will not be really 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 standard but it'll be the explanation of what you're seeing on screen so scale injection stand, starts stands for what for structured query language and uh scale injection i mean sorry sql and sql can let us uh, do the following can let us access and manipulate the database. So I see here another new term that we have not talked about. So I'm, 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 I'm considering that everybody is a beginner here. So that we should all understand. I'll not take all of us at the same level as experts because I believe some are still in you and maybe from this lecture, they can get inspired to start and doing or understanding the uh, programming. So that on that ground is where i will try to explain really almost everything so that everyone whether you're new whether you're what you should really understand 
everything that we what that we talk about. So it is good for seniors because we're going to look at different programming, I mean pro programming practices, good practices, and then it's also good for what for really, really, really beginners. Don't be there and feel like ah, I don't know these things. Let me just just to be there. No, I'm going to try to explain everything. For example, right now, we're seeing a new word surfacing that we have not looked at before, the database. So I'm going to just give you a meaning of database, then into what we proceed. So what is meant by database? If you really, if you've really never programmed anything, or if you don't have idea about programming, a database is a place where we keep what? We keep uh, dynamic information in the system. For example, uh, if you have a system, let's say it is a, a school system whereby every information of i mean students information within that school system so it means that it will reach a, it will reach a point where you'll have to click on a page and read the details about a particular student so according to the way how we know we write these things in a, in files or things in file like html files it is very simple you can design a page to show information of a what of a student his picture his name and maybe his uh, his class okay for one student but you write that static HTML but as you can hear it is just static it is not going to change so what does it mean if there are three students then it means that you have to create three different files oh if there God. are 10 students it means that you have to create 10 different files but now what if they become so many so does it mean that uh, every time this the school wants to add a student in the system you have to create come and create a specific file for that student of course it will be so problematic and very hard so that's where the idea of a database comes in a database is just a storage that will contain things that can change at any time for example if we use the database the use of a database and we use the the, the use of uh, i mean and if we make use of the database and we make use of static things like html we can be able to do what to write only one file of html and only we change the fields that we want to change for example we write a file that will be showing a profile of a student so that file may have things that are going to change like name picture of a student maybe and also his current class so you write that one file alone so now in the database you will save there things that change in time for example, the name, the 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 the, 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 current, the picture of a student, the link of a picture of a student, and the current class of a student. So in the database, you record them in the form of a table, rows, and you have maybe like 50 students, name, just only the name, the link of a picture, and the current class of a student. You have those ones in the database. So it will be in form of what? In form of a row, but they will be just plain. So by making use of database, You'll be able to get that information and feed it dynamically in this HTML template or this HTML what HTML file. So if someone says I want to see student number one, he clicks on one. So you just go to database, collect the information of that student number one, and feed it in this one HTML file. So if you say I want to see student number three, you click on three. Then you get uh, you go to database and fetch that information and feed those changing information in this one HTML what one html file so that means that by doing like that you can dynamically manage a system any day the school owner can add another student just the row who they added the database then he can view it anytime in this static part in the static uh, file so that is just one basic example that i can give you about the database and how you need database it contains the data that is what that is uh, dynamic for a project so things that change we put them in that data then these things that uh, that are static you put them in what in a in a file so things that change like name what sex gender etc you'll be fetching them from database and display them in a what in a file so by making those two then you'll be able to do what to do things that are really really dynamic and things that are amazing for example there is only one Facebook application, you'll download it on Facebook from Facebook. But if you don't know programming, can you see it's interesting? I download the same Facebook 
and you also download the same Facebook, the things that I, I see, they are really different from yours. Okay, so what does it mean? It means that there's a database that shows my things according to my settings or my preferences, and also shows you things according to you. So that is, it just records rows and only fields are the ones that I want that are changing. It is one application, but so many people are using it. Same source code. So how is that possible? Is by use of what? Of database. So if we didn't know database, that is what I meant. That's what is meant by database. That table, that, that group of tables that store lines that change in what? In our system. So let us base from here also. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. So let us also base from here to explain what is meant by SQL. Since we have got now a picture of a database, now we know what is SQL. So SQL is the language that we use to communicate to database, okay? Remember database is now a group of information, like for example, the database for mobile money, the database for students information, the database for the bank. So, that's, so it will just have the records only, okay? So there must be something that we should be able to communicate from those records that are in a database and display them or send them the programming language that will display them to the use of the string. So that standard language that we use to communicate in the, to get the data from the, from the database or where our storage is of information, that language is what we call SQL or what we call standard, I mean structured query language so there are different types but uh, there is only one way or that logic of getting data from the database and display it or and make use of it is what you call what is what you call sql and that's why you're able to see the uh, us telling you that sql lets you access and manipulate the database so at this moment i'll 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 i'll, I'll assume i'll not even assume i'll know that you now understand what's meant by database and what's meant by sql and why we need both of them so i think we can proceed uh don't worry i'll ask questions as we proceed but right now we are still early it's still it's still early so i hope things will be self-explanatory but in the middle there we'll have to interact so sql now sql can retrieve data from the database so according to the explanation that i've given uh, the, the explanation that i've given you it means that now these things can now make sense. Data that you know, a place where we keep records, and SQL, that language that you collect data from the database. So it can be used to insert data. So when uh, we have a new student coming to our school, we can be able to use SQL to insert that student or to add that student in a what? In our database. So SQL can update records. Maybe this student. Uh, he we made the mistake in his name. He wanted to be corrected, so we need to update or to edit. So it's the power of SQL to do what to update the what that information. So maybe at his name, at for example, my name is Mubara. So maybe the teacher who entered it, he put A at last. Then on my national end, there's no A. So I'll come to the teacher and they say, no, there's no A at the end of my name. So we'll go and edit and remove that A and update the database. So it is the power of SQL that will send this information to that uh, storage called database to change that name and update it to a new one that was specified. So SQL can delete records. So, you know, uh, maybe a student has misbehaved, we have expelled the student from our school, we don't need his records from uh, in, our, in our storage, he's wasting our, our space. So that's what we do, we delete that student. So who, how shall we remove him? So it is the use of what? Of SQL to remove that student from what? From our database. But here now you see how it is becoming now interesting. When it comes to delete, this delete can be useful at the same time can be very, very harmful. For example, we have uh, the same school system and teach students, we are using it to store the, the, the school fees payment for maybe 1,000 students that are at your school. Now, if a person can access your SQL and del and 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 delete, uh, and delete the records that shows 
maybe a student has paid okay oh and delete like 50 records that you, that 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 your students have paid so what does it mean it means that you will not be able to access this data and the student can come and approve that i paid and then he tell you any amount and then they lie you or you have that kind of what conflict because of the data that was what that was lost or imagine that student uh, teachers have submitted their marks then someone has an access to this sql or this language that communicates the database and come and delete all the marks and it is the day of parents day and parents are waiting for their report card so what does it mean it will become a problem so sql is good but also sql is bad and that's why we're going to look at sql injection and we see the problem where it comes in so now you can start relating where we are doing what where we are heading so sql can create a new database so a database is, is a storage so you can have many systems but on the same server you can have a system of a bank or maybe you can have maybe a system for employees and a system for students so you don't want to mix these two information employees want to manage them from another place and maybe the student information from them to what from another place so those are two systems so if they are total two different systems so it doesn't mean that you need to keep the information in one container like a database we also call it a container so it means that you don't need to keep the information in one container so what do you do you create two different what two different containers or two different data they say so well, how will you create it it is the use of sql sql you can command it to create it one container for for, for students another container for for teachers or for employees so i hope you're relating and understanding the power of sql sql can create a table so a table is a is a is a is a, is a section or it's a box inside the container that we use to keep related information so you want to keep classes information and student information so class information can be maybe p1 p2 and p3 and then student information maybe mohindo Barak, john black whatever whatever like those students so you see that the structure of student information is not the same structure of what of the class information so what do you do you have to in the same container or in the same database you have again to partition it into what we call tables and these tables will keep the related structures and information so a table for students so you keep information that are related to students a table for maybe classes it will keep the information about classes a table for subjects so things that have different structures you keep them in different what in different containers and those co i mean in different sections or in different uh, boxes and those boxes inside the big database or inside the big container called database they are the one that we call what that we call tables so when i proceed and talk about tables you'll not be confused that these are the tables that we no, these are the tables of database okay so it's the use of sql also create a what a table on a what on a database so sql can create stored procedures so sometimes you don't need to repeat ourselves for example once just write a function that will be getting students in a specific class so if i don't want to repeat myself like select from this where this got this i can write that one as one procedure or what you call a function okay so you store it on what on database so you'll just be giving maybe this function a specific id and gives you the information so i say i have created a function that will be showing me students who have the school fees balance x so i just put the school fees balance x and then that function does the whole logic and gives me the students who have that uh, that that school fees balance that i've specified so who has that power to create that kind of a function in a database or that kind of a procedure in a database it is what it is sql so sql can create views so views they are kind of tables but uh, they are which are ooh, that are that that are, that, are, that are not permanent so if you can join like two tables for example you want when you collect students they are you want to collect them with their with their respective classes but remember we said the classes can be in a different table and students can be in a different table so you have to join this table 
So instead of you joining these tables every time, you can create what we call a view only one time and we'll be joining these tables anytime. I mean multiple times anytime you want it. Okay. So it will be a temporary table. So SQL can set permissions on tables, procedures, etc. So as you go deep into databases, today's not about databases, but I'm to give you enough light. As you go deep into database, you'll see now there is a need of permissions. Okay, who should be able to do this, who should not be able to do that because of security. Okay, so still it is the power of SQL to say, okay, only this user is the one who is able to do what? To delete. Only this user is the one who is able to add or edit as you proceed, as you go deep into what? Into that area. So that are called what? Permission. So that is uh, a brief introduction about databases and a brief introduction about SQL. I hope you can ask yourself if you really got something or if you totally, totally lost. If you totally, totally lost, don't worry, ask in the video, I will get you back. But ask yourself if uh, you're relating, either you're an, a, a, a real uh, beginner or you are advanced the, uh, developer, if you advise developer, make sure that I'm not lying. Uh, you will learn something new. And if you beginner, then make sure that you do what? That you learn the whole thing. So we proceed, right? So now, so we now know what's meant by database. We now know what is meant by what? By SQL. I am being slow, I know, because we have the whole time and I've calculated. So don't worry. And say the teacher is too explaining, explaining to me. Because I've calculated time and I, I want everyone to work. To understand okay so we proceed what is sql then yeah we have finished that okay now what is sql injection we now know what's meant by database now not meant by by what by by sql now we proceed what is sql injection so as you can see it on your screen sql injection is an attack that consists of insertion I repeat, SQL injection is an attack that consists of insertion or injection. So this insertion, we're going to come here, but we'll let us first read, okay, let us first read the whole sentence and then come back and internalize and explain it properly. So SQL injection is a, an attack, okay, that consists of insertion or injection of an of a SQL query via an input of data from the client to the application. Okay, let's explain it. Uh, because if I explain things early, the next one I'll just, we just say, okay, I've already understood this. Okay, so SQL injection is an attack that consists of what? Of an, an insertion. So SQL injection is just nothing, an attack. So you know what I mean by, by attack? It means that something is malicious. So an enemy is trying to attack you, okay? To do something that is not right on you. So that's what meant by an attack. So an, an attack that consists of, or the, an attack that has something that is going to add something to your original SQL is what we call an SQL injection. And this attack is always made when we allow users to enter information in our heart, in our system. You know, uh, this, so I'm now coming back to explain it, right? So we know we create systems. And uh, most of the systems that we do, they have to be interactive. For example, every application that you have on your phone, every application, it has at least input. It has to collect something from you. So it can process it and... Uh, show you the what the the information it gets data and then process it and show you the information you know the difference between raw data and processed information i hope you know so that input for example you're registering on uh, on what on uh, let us say on safe border they'll ask you hey give us your your phone number because we want to know you where you are and we want to know how to contact you so you'll have to enter your phone number. Let us not even go very far. That input, where entering your phone number, that can be the first place where you, you can 
you can pass the SQL injection. So SQL injection, how does it come? It comes that the data that you provide to the application through that input is going to be saved on the what? On the database. And the only way you can save the data from the database is through SQL. So if the SQL is the medium, media, medium, medium, one is medium, right? Is the medium that you're going to use to communicate with the what? The database. So that SQL or that bus or that car or that thing, if is the is the one that you can target, feed in something wrong and it goes and mess with the what? With the database. So the ability of you, I mean the ability for someone to be able to successfully add something through the input and you know this input is going to be entered into sql and then sql will go to the database so the ability for you to enter something on an input of a certain application or system that is going to temper with an sql whether intentionally or even without you knowing is what you call that that the developer did not intend to is what you call what is, is sql injection so sql injection has just a sound it is adding injecting inserting something that is malicious to this language called sql that communicates to what to database and this problem comes most especially when you're collecting data from users for you you'll handle your project like a baby like uh, like everything you make sure it, when you're creating it it's just you handle it like a baby right then another person come and uh, put anything so for you are not when you're testing application you're just putting maybe a real phone number and then submit and then you see everything is okay but someone will come and put copy the whole javascript code and paste it in that field while you're asking him to enter the, the phone number then you just collect before it is next because you do not check and save on database so the whole output can become a real real mess on what database so proceed sql injection is nothing but just an attack can be intentional or even without being intentional that involves adding something that the programmer did not intend into the sql so i hope we are understanding so since i've explained the first so the remaining one will see the kind of straight or self-explanatory now look at this sentence that has come a successful a successful sql injection exploit can read sensitive data from the database even modify the data when you say modify means you start update delete and execute administration operation on the database such as shutting down the ddns or the database managing system see see what we've been talking about so if someone successfully finds a way to to, to do sql injection on your uh, on your system it means that he can do the following he can insert data <laughs> you see dangerous eh? so a student has not paid school fees but because someone i knock up for you he has a trick of doing sql injection in a system he can insert data so if he can pay you can insert data a record that says this student has paid a specific amount of money and he is even owing are you even owing him a specific balance you come and collect a balance yet the student did not really pay that is the power of sql injection so it can update data you're having a low a bad cgp so if a guy knows how to do sql injection he can come to the system and change the cgp and make this guy graduate you can delete data you have bad records on, um, at university and you're saved in the school database how you phone maybe in 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 crime different crimes etc drugs etc but you want to be clean so someone who knows that that how to do sql injection can come and delete this data from your what from your database and this student will appear clean so uh when you want to penalize the student 
then you'll be like, um, clean. And you'll be like, no, I set a DNS disinformation in the database. And they'll check the database while you're not there. And if they if that is late, the date can work through. So that is just a, a one scenario. But there are so many, so many billions of scenarios that can show SQL injection can be harmful. Um, so, uh, so sorry about that. So there are so many. Just just a random thought. Flights run on uh, run on programs uh, on, on on schedules. Now these schedules are stored in systems of database. So it's a, a flight is expected to land maybe at a specific time. Someone come and delete this record from the what from the database of flights. So there's no record that shows that at this time a flight will be landing. So there are other flights, I mean, there are other uh, aeroplanes that are coming on that runway. So the other one is already cleared, but the record is deleted. So what does it do? It will just come, it shows it is clear to be landed. And then the other guy does not has not confirmed it. So it will come and crash with what? <laughs> with uh, with uh, a plane that is on its running board. So there are so many, 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 many scenarios, okay? So many scenarios then you can do what and you can imagine when you have access to what uh, ability to do a scale injection of different systems so we proceed i now hope you have you know now what is meant by sql injection you might not know exactly but you now have the picture of what is meant by sql injection so sql injection is a code injection or technique that might destroy your database okay so this one can destroy even the what the database the sql injection SQL injection is one of the most common hacking techniques. So one of the most common hacking techniques you want, it is by use of what? SQL injection. So if you can be able to do SQL injection as you're going to demonstrate practically, you see that you can be able to see what you're not supposed to see. If you maybe a genius or maybe really powerful, do a SQL injection on WhatsApp. You'll be able to see uh, People's different messages that you cannot be able to see, that you wouldn't have seen. You'll be able to see emails, but those things are really protected. Eh? But if your system is weak, someone can do a scale injection to see or access what they are not supposed to, have, to to see. And at the end of the thing, or the whole process becomes hacking. They hacked me, and they maybe release my nudes. <laughs> So that's how a skill can become what can become really, really, really dangerous. And you can, it is the most one, most common that they use for what? For hacking. So skill injection is the placement of a malicious code in a SQL statement. We have already talked about this, and it can be via a web page input. So when you ask the user, enter your username and password. For him, you don't enter the username and password because he knows how you wrote your SQL, he's a programmer like you. What does he do? He writes a counter SQL in that field that you ask that person to enter the username and put in things that are going to confuse your SQL as you're going to demonstrate. So at the end of the day, ah, a programmer meets a programmer and he's able to log into your system without even your consent and he's able to do what? To do mess on your what? On your system. So, that placement of malicious code into that SQL statement that you're going to locate your database is what we call SQL injection. And this one can even be done on what? On the web page when someone enters the information in your system. Hope we are together. So SQL injection uh, usually occurs when you ask a user one input. I've already explained this. The main problem is when you ask the user, please now enter your password. That is where the first problems become. Okay, that is where the first problem comes. Okay, like enter username, enter user ID, and instead of username and ID, the guy gives you an SQL statement that will unknowing, un unknowingly run on your database. Sometimes someone may not even be known. For example, you know what this apostrophe, that, that apostrophe, is it apostrophe? I mean, that, I mean, okay, SQL has some characters. Eh? 
uh, like uh, apostrophe. So we must be in order the apostrophe is. So if someone someone's name has apostrophe, so what does it mean? It means that the apostrophe that is going to be entered by someone is going to mess with that word that is entered, intended with in your SQL. At the end of the day, it either get what it was supposed to get or crash your what? Your system. So it can be done even unknowingly. Gamutamani Nabi take Ayo. Ah, Kankanachi Tungachi in the TSA. So, programming languages that are vulnerable to SQL injection. So, that is a programming language. So, I'm teaching you like usually here, like a uh, uh, beginner, most people. So, I will have to explain because some may get even inspiration from today's class. They say, hey, I always fear these things. Let me try this. Okay. So, that's why I'm trying to explain every point. And don't worry, we have our time and uh, we'll finish. Okay. So, what is a programming language? A programming language. So, you have looked at three things. I mean, four, three things today. We have looked at HTML. HTML is the one that will be able to present the information on the screen of the user. We have looked at something called database. Database is that software or that storage that will contain this record that is dynamic on our system. The third thing that we have looked at, we have looked at an SQL. An SQL is a language that will be able to communicate with the what with the database. So you now know those three things. Now there is one, one, one more thing, just one like this that is missing for you to know how to make a complete system. And that one thing is called a programming language. So a programming language is that now uh, brain that is going to process the logic between the data that has come from database through SQL and then process it and display it on the what? On the user's screen. So that guy or that brain that makes the condition, that makes the loops, that makes uh, the checks etc is what you call a programming language, that middle guy. I mean, that middle, that middle, I'm sorry about the language. I, I hope you're all used here. So I hope yeah, we will connect along the way so that way. So that part, I mean, that, 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 that entity that does that whole logic, the brain of your software that is powered by the database through the SQL is that you call a programming language, okay? So you have different types of programming language. We have PHP, okay? So you've heard of something called PHP. We have Java, we have uh, JavaScript, we have uh, ASP, we have ETC, C Sharp, all of them. So those, we have Python. So those are the ones that we call programming language. A Python is the one that will, 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 will collect the password from you from HTML that you submitted and then write an SQL that is going to collect this password from I mean the, yeah, this information from the database and then make a decision is this password correct or not so who does that it is the Python or the language or the PHP okay so that is the fourth thing that you need to make a complete system I will summarize them you need the front end or the user will interface with, which can be HTML. You will need the database, which can be my SQL database, which can be Oracle database, which can be no SQL database. So you need the database. You need the SQL language. SQL language is the one that will communicate with the database. And then lastly, you need the programming language, the one that will do the part, the logic. So those are the four things. Now we'll look at the four things right now, which is the programming language PHP. So these programming languages, some people, I mean the, some some users, I mean some creators who created them, some they are not really 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 serious or kind of they are not really creative. So they ended up making what? Making uh loopholes that can enable user to penetrate through them and make an SQL injection to our what? To our database. So which are these programming languages? So the answer is any programming language.
any programming language as long as that interfaces with the database is prone okay don't worry we are remaining for 10 minutes to finish our first session so don't worry we're going to have our first break. so every programming language as long as communicate with database is prone or can be affected by sql injection there's no any programming language that is really 100 percent sure that cannot be affected by sql injection because every day people get more creative so you cannot guarantee it. okay so you cannot say guarantee i'm using uh python so i cannot be able to maybe uh, be affected with sql injection so you cannot guarantee that people become really creative every day so never say that statement to someone for remote so every programming language has weakness of sql injection but mm, as we proceed we will see how we can mitigate so the answer is there okay so higher level uh, programming languages affected by sql injection okay so let us look at them pal pal that one uh, a friend with of php <laughs> we have python we have ruby on rails we have ruby sorry we have java we have uh, asp we have sp.net we have jsp we have uh, PHP and C sharp and ruby.net. So if we ask you in the exam, can you please tell us uh, some programming languages that uh, uh, can be affected with SQL injection? You can see it is a simple, very, very simple language because we have said every programming language that interfaces with the database. But don't answer it simply. First thing, there are some programming languages that are not here. For example, JavaScript, uh, HTML, some people call HTML programming language. So for you maybe Leslie write CSS here, so which may not be right because those programming languages they don't interface with databases. So these program I, JavaScript does it interface with database? <laughs> we can talk about that. Carol is this cat. Okay, so uh, then this these programming languages and many more as long as it can communicate the database can be affected with what with SQL injection. So the lower programming language, the middle level programming language that can be affected, even the C, C, C++ can be also be affected what? with SQL injection. So it will be up to your creativity of how you can limit this SQL injection. So if you want to learn more, go ahead and search this book. I mean this paper, I mean this book, uh, Howard, Deadly Sins. I read yeah, this is uh, Dr. Drake's book. A favorite book here, I hope he has shared with you. Uh that's his PDF. So uh page page six. Uh deadly sins of software security. You'll find uh the details about what he talked about today. So examples of SQL injection. So don't worry, I'll give you opportunity to interact. I'm going to just give me more five minutes. I finish, then we will also talk about talk something okay so and then we'll go for our break yeah simple as that so let's look at uh examples of sql injection then after i think yeah let's do it like this then we come back we look now we go to practicals yes let's do theory right now then we'll come back we'll go straight to practicals okay yeah so examples of sql injection so you have different types of i mean different examples of sql injection and the first one we have sql injection base base b or basic base on one equal to one is always true so that is one example of sql injection so when you come to do practices you will see how can this be done i mean how can someone use this one as an sql what? injection this is a fact one is always equal to one so someone can use that one as an sql injection so that's one type that's already recognized. One equal to one is always true. Another type is uh, empty string is always equal to empty string. So that's what someone can base on that to do an SQL injection on your watch on your database. Another one is SQL injection based on a batch SQL statement. So uh, in database, you have possibility 
to execute more than one statement in uh, in a database i mean in in one sql so someone can use that one as an x as an as a weak point whereby he adds his second statement he stops the statement and add the second one on the same sql then for you you execute so what does it mean it means that you have you have executed a batch or a, a group of sql at one time so that one becomes a what a weak point for you write your sql select where username equal to whatever the user has provided to you so the guy knows that uh, according to experience this is how you write sql so for him he stops your sql by putting that character and go ahead and do what and write another sql then for you just collect that string and execute on your database boom you have executed the two sqls in the same time or two statements in the same time so that can also be used as a what as a weak point another fact or another weakness that is known for sql injection is sql injection based on a bus sql comment so someone uh sql you can in sql you can as well comment you know comment is something that is not meant to be executed in a certain programming language right so someone can say from here you write a character of commenting so he comments the remaining part of your sql then he starts writing for his what his own sql so doing that way so it means that your sql your real sql that you mean for won't be effective but his because he has already commented it but his and the end up being what end up executing it so becomes a problem so basically on these facts it can prove that really sql injection can be done so SQL injection based on one equal to one. I uh, will look at this when uh, we come to the second session, but you can look at it in a theory side. So select all from users where user ID equals to one. So your intention will be this. Eh? Your intention will be you collect that user ID, maybe username here, right? And then your intention will be like. Uh, Your intention B, it ends here, right? So you get this from the user. Okay. I mean you get you get this one. It's this one. You get this ID from the user. And then your SQL stops here. So the guy because has enough knowledge about SQL, what he does, what he does, so his SQL you hope it will end here. So for him to provide his username equals to 200 like this, this is what you expect from him. Eh? So for him, he writes that, he goes ahead and writes O one equals to one. So what does it mean? So he, he gives this in the what? In the username field. So for you, just go ahead and collect this and then concatenate it here and then execute. So when you concatenate it here, what does it mean? It means that it will take the whole thing. So this O, you know what's meant by O. If one condition is true, then the other one, I mean, then the, 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 the set will be executed, like it will be considered to be all true. So this one might be wrong. You might have entered wrong username, but the database bases on this second condition okay that the the user created by himself right it bases on this one and the end is up showing things that we are not really meant so it confirms this one to be true okay and then okay go ahead to the next step and then at the end of the day someone will be able to access all the users in your database yet you made him to access a specific piece of data so that one can expose you so that is a weak point or a weakness in sql so that is one and we are going to demonstrate in practicals in the next session so another one is uh one is always one okay so that is another sql type of injection one is always one that is true isn't it a fact it is a fact so you can ask the user to enter his what his password and then the user 
added this second what this second uh condition or 141 so it means that this sql will be considered to be true so that is it and another thing the empty string is got empty string so the user can go ahead and add the empty string at the end of the day the sql injection will happen so uh, the SQL injection based on uh, batch SQL statement. So you can see here, uh, maybe you are meant to execute only this SQL from user, right? And then because of input, the malicious person, the malicious person go ahead and add, and add what? And add, and add this, I want to show you. Uh, the malicious password, go ahead and add this, this, this uh, semicolon. You know what's meant by semicolon SQL? It will stop the SQL. So it means that the SQL will be considered to stop from here. But in SQL, we are allowed to execute more than one statement. So for him, after he adds this, you go ahead and write another statement okay drop table maybe transaction so if you are careless what happens this statement will also be executed at the end of the day you don't have any transaction that you have ever done for the past seven years that your business has been existing so it is that dangerous right so it is that dangerous and you're going to demonstrate this thing practically in the next lecture so uh lastly we have a uh, sql injection based on a batch comment so a person can decide to comment okay you sql and do what and do uh you see this is how you comment in sql so a person can comment and then write his own what his own sql or he comment the remaining part. So he say oh, one equal to one, and then he comment the remaining part. So it means the remaining part will not be what? Will not be considered. So we have to be very careful in what? In the SQLs that we do what? That we, uh, we, we, we implement. So uh, that's it for the first session. Uh, the next session, we are going to look into practicals of how these things can be possible. Then uh, we will conclude with what? with uh, how we can overcome these SQL injections. But before we go for a short break, I'll have at least uh, two people to say something. Just say something about what we talked about today, and then we'll have our short break. But don't go for break before I tell you. So can you have uh, just two people to comment, a lady first, and then a gentleman? Okay. Uh, thank you. I think okay. Also, oh, by the way, also the main lecturer, you can uh uh. Yeah, thank you. Them so uh, we, you guys were taking not more than uh, I think even the time that has gone, and yet you need to do some practical sessions. Mm -hmm. Not more than five minutes. Let's take about five. Yeah, five minutes, please. Okay. Uh, uh Josephine, Josephine, can you make? your comment okay first of all thank you for the lecture it was really helpful so far um is is the sql injection always bad and there any circumstances where it is useful okay thank you Daryl? okay because they might be a little different. My question would be, when you talk about a SQL injection, isn't that a vulnerability with the SQL databases rather than programming languages? Because if I'm to use any of the languages that are vulnerable with a different kind of database, for example, a no SQL database, either MongoDB or any other database that is not based on SQL, then in that case, I would not be vulnerable to SQL injection attacks. Okay. Uh, so I respond to those two and then you go for a quick break. 
Okay, uh, the first question, um, is it good or bad? Or is it always bad? It depends on how you want to use it. And uh, it's, the answer is yes and no. For example, if you have any way, you can, ex you can execute uh, SQL injection to a URL system so it cannot maybe touch. Or if you have an any way, you can execute SQL injection to a Yaka system so that you don't pay electricity. So what does it mean? It means it has become good to you, but it's also bad to the system owner. So you'll be able, you'll have manipulated the other person who is what? Who is uh, who you are supposed to be accountable for. So it is good for you, good bad for the other. But generally speaking, it is a very bad. And if you uh, a, if you fight, I mean, if you if if you write program, you're not supposed to involve yourself in those kind of practices. You're supposed to know them, so you can be able to avoid them. But don't be you shouldn't. According to ethics of programming, you're not supposed to do those kind of what those kind of things. So it is good for someone who wants to use it for their own good, but it's bad for someone who owns the system. So I think that's answer. Then lastly, uh, he say he's saying that it is not the programming languages that are vulnerable. SQL, it is SQL that is it. No, the answer is it's a programming language. And the, and the question, the, the, the statement was clear programming languages that that interface with database. That statement was very clear. So, as long as you're interfacing with the, S, with the SQL database, I mean the database using SQL, then it means that that programming language is vulnerable whether it is uh, python or what because someone can pass through it creatively and execute an sql injection through the programming language that you use to communicate with the, uh, with the database using sql if you're using no sql things like firebase where you don't need to write an sql so what does it mean it means that there is no database that uh, that supports an SQL and you're not using what? An SQL database that, uh, that is using SQL. So it means that it's of course that, that in that scenario, there's no SQL injection because there's no SQL to that. But if you're using a database like my SQL, where you have to communicate to database using uh, SQL. So that programming language, you cannot say that I'm going to use a specific programming language so I can be free from SQL injection, no. If you're using any kind of programming language and the communication database using SQL, then it means you're prone to SQL injection. So I think uh, that's it. Uh, we will go for five minutes. Then Dr. I think Dr. Drake will give you a remark when you open and then we start practical. So uh, at 11.35, we should be back. 11.35, we should be back for practical. Yeah. Thank you, brother. So guys, take note of the calendar. 11.35, take a break, and then uh, we'll be back.
Recording in progress. Hello, big speaker. My workshop. Thank you.